Thank you for joining us tonight. We had a little technical difficulty and have to record our video on my phone versus my laptop, but we're here. Um, my name is Jennifer Itkinen, and I am Member Support Specialist for Girl Scouts Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines, and this is... <laughs> Annika, and I'm a Girl Scout Senior. Yep, and she's my daughter. She'll be helping out tonight. Tonight, we'll be making sit -upons. and sit -upon making is an essential Girl Scout tradition. I did it when I was a Girl Scout. Annika did it when she was a younger Girl Scout. Um, sit -upons are basically a homemade waterproof cushion and barrier. They're used for when doing activities while sitting on the ground or um, on a damp or dirty surface. Um, there are three basic parts to a sit upon. There's the outer shell, there's the inner stuffing, and then there's the edging. And tonight we'll show you four examples. You can also find many ideas on the internet or if you're a Pinterest fan like I am and Annika is, um, you can find some creative ways to do sit upons, but we'll just do some basics tonight. The first basic one, is using wallpaper. So, um, wallpaper is not quite as common as it used to be, but when I was a Girl Scout, we did um, use the wallpaper. Um, so, when you make a sit-upon, there are a couple of different stitches you can use. This one is about uh, 12 by 14 inches. Um, you just need enough to, you know, cover your bottom, your backside. Um, when I make sit-upons, I like to um, use a larger piece and fold it in half. Um, so then it fits around what you're going to stuff it with. So if you're going to use newspaper, just to make sure that there's a two to three edge border. Or you could also use um, magazines as a stuffing as well. And so, um, we're using the wallpaper as our outer shell. Inner stuffing, we're going to use our newspaper. For the edging for this one, we are just using our thread. Um, and this is just cotton string. It's the same cotton string if you watched our sit-upon uh, video a couple of weeks ago. You could also use embroidery thread, you could use twine, you can use yarn, you could use lacing. And to get the, that thread, yarn, lacing, you can use um, a large needle, kind of like the ones we used for the dunk bags. Um, and you just thread it through. I chose um, the blunt tip ones, especially if you're working with younger girls, the blunt tip needle. Um, it still will pierce through the wallpaper or our other outer shell items. But, um, so you can do that basic running stitch, which is where you come up. Running stitch I also call the up and down stitch. So you can go up and down. You could also use a, a whip stitch or an outer stitch. And that's just the one where you poke it through and go around the edge instead. Okay. So then when you've stitched, because this is the edge that we folded on and you've sewn along two of the sides. You want to make sure to put your stuffing in here. You can put your stuffing in ahead of time, but I find that especially working with younger girls, it tends to fall out. <laughs> um, so I usually have them, what works best is to sew two sides, then stop. And Annika, would you please stuff it with our layer of newspaper? Okay. 
so you can use the needle. One other method you could use is a hole punch. You can a hole punch through. That way, if you don't have needles, you can use that thread just to do that up and down. And I'm going to have Annika finish this one while I prepare for our next example. So our next example is using um, tablecloth, just using a vinyl tablecloth. You can find them at the dollar store, Family Dollar, Walmart, whatever. Just um, a cheap, inexpensive one. This tablecloth is 52 by 70 inches, um, and it will make um, four sit -upons. So I cut the tablecloth in half. Half is in here just for my demo to show you what I bought. Um, and then I cut them into four squares or four rectangles. And then I folded that in half. So, um, and it got a little big. So if I take my hunk of newspaper, I'll tip the camera down and kind of show it is a little big. So what I did was I just trimmed along the edges. So this is the folded edge. So um, I'm not gonna cut that but I just trimmed all along the edge here. Put that back up. And then I got a smaller size. And um, while preparing for this activity, I thought, is it just me or have newspapers gotten smaller? I always thought newspapers were a little wider, but it works, so. Just my, hmm, maybe I'm getting old <laughs> observation. <laughs> um, okay, so for this one, oh, Annika, you want to show you're finished? So there is her finished sit upon, the wallpaper version. Uh, girls could also decorate with markers or stickers on that as well. So that's our wallpaper version. This one, we're using our tablecloth, our newspaper for our, our stuffing, and then the string again for the outer edge. This one... So you thread your needle. Ooh, ooh, got a knot in the middle. Um, <laughs> trying to prepare to make it run smoother. But um, so you thread your needle, then you do your knot. Now well, we'll just we'll just hopefully it'll go through okay. Do your knot. And that knot is down there, so it should go through. And so if you have a needle, poke it through. And then we're going to do that running stitch, that up and down stitch. So poke it through. up and down, okay. Um, I'm going to have Annika finish this one as well. While um, I show you another example and um, how you can incorporate this into a troop activity. Now with the wallpaper one, I said I did it when I was a Girl Scout. And so, and that it is a tradition. So when I was a Girl Scout, I used this book here. So 
So just to show that it has been in um, Girl Scout books, Girl Scout guides for a long time. So this book is from the 80s. So Sitapons are in that one. Sitapons are in this book as well. I think this one is from the 90s on how to make them and have it a troop of girl activity. And currently, Sitapons are mentioned in our um, Brownie Guide, the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting. And it just uh, talks about it in the Girl Scout way. So when I was a troop leader, I used this one um, in the Girl Scout way uh, badge that girls earned as brownies. In step five, enjoying Girl Scout traditions. And here on the edge, it shows how to make a sit upon. So if you are a brownie leader or even a multi-age group, um, you could use this as a part of the Girl Scout way to earn their badge for that. Um, when Annika was little, we did this with her troop and, um, we made sit upons using the tablecloths and then we read the brownie story while we sat on our, um, sit upons out at the park where we met. It was really nice because there, it was a community center and then there was a park nearby. So that's how, um, I did it as a troop leader. You could also do it, um, as a gearing up for camp. You could do it as an intro activity while you're waiting for girls to arrive. Um, so lots of fun different activities. How are you doing, Annika? Good. Working on it? Yeah. Okay. Well, she's still working on that one. Our third example is using cardboard as that inner stuffing. And for this example, we used cookie cases. So we cut up the cookie cases. We use contact paper for the outer shell. And then um, the contact paper also served as our edging. And then girls can decorate. You could put photos. I've also seen um, a sit upon that was um, using newspaper, but it was folded origami style, which looked really cool. Um, you could also use the contact paper maybe with um, the Sunday comic pages. That would kind of be a neat um, inner part um, just to kind of make it unique and fun. So, yeah. Is that not really no. getting to you? No? Okay. So, this was another example. You want me to keep talking? <laughs> How about I finish that one up and you can demo <laughs> you can demo the the big one. Almost done? Okay. Well, we'll wait a little bit for her to finish. Um, so I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, if you can um, leave a comment where you're from. Um, what troop you're from, if you're from a troop. Um, also, if you have any questions, we can answer. Um, sit upons, it's kind of um, usually like with newspaper, you kind of measure. Usually, it's uh, they can be from 12 to 14 inches to 14 to 16 inches um, for that um, area. Or is it diameter? She's in geometry this year. <laughs> um, but um, I have also seen um, a sit-upon, and it was really cool, um, using adult-sized jeans. You cut off the legs, um, and then you stuff them either with plastic bags um, or fiber fill. You could also use foam as an inner stuffing, too. And then um, you stuff the jeans, you sew it up, sew all the holes, and then you can use a, um, a string or yarn or even a belt to use as a carrying handle. Um, and then you can use, girls can use fabric markers or fabric paint to decorate that sit upon it. I really thought that that was a cool idea. Um, possibilities are endless. So. 
<laughs> She's working away, working away. I'll just kind of explain our next example is going to be using um, um, a bag, a shopping bag um, that you can just find at uh, the dollar store, Walmart, um, Family Dollar is where we, I think we got ours from. Um, and then using duct tape as that edging. Um, duct tape. It's kind of fun. We got some fun colors. Um, this is Annika's leftover duct tape from her projects. So. Looks like, let's see here. We have a brownie and a junior from Chippewa Falls. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. And Josie from Minnesota Lakes and Pines. Thank you for tuning in. So close. Almost there. <laughs> All right. Okay. So... So we're working on this. Annika didn't quite stop at that one to put the stuffing in, but that's all right. We can still put our stuffing in, put our newspaper. I'm just going to, so either you would have to pull out the stitches, but she left enough that we can plop that newspaper in there. And finish her up. Finish that edging up. <laughs> Sometimes when you work um, with the younger girls and you're making these sit-upons, um, sometimes frustrations come about and that's okay. Um, just reassuring those your, your girls that if they make mistakes, that's okay. It just creates character. So if your stitching isn't perfect, if you kind of have a loop like here, <laughs> that's okay. We can work it out. We can make it fun. We can tie it off. No big deal. So it just makes it unique. So here we have this one. We're all done here. Sometimes, too, when you're working with young girls and the long string here, um, it can get looped and knotted, and, and that's all right. So I'm just going through this hole twice, and then pulling it through, and tying a knot at the end. Voila! Tablecloth sit upon complete with lots of character <laughs> all right so our next one is like I said using that plastic bag we've got our pretty princess bag here and what we're going to do is we're going to put the stuffing in our newspaper ahead of time and then because it's got some cloth here we want our sit upon to be waterproof and so we're just going to duct tape the edges. <laughs> and Annika, we did pre-cut our duct tape. <laughs> so Annika will finish that up. Looks like we have a brownie from North Bay, California. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. So Annika is taping the bottom portion. <laughs> Annika's more savvy at doing the videos than I am. <laughs> so taping that. Getting that stuffing in there. This one is nice using the plastic bags. 
um, just the plastic shopping bags, um, the reusable kind, um, because it has a handle, a built-in handle already. Almost done. So, good thing that duct tape wasn't totally stuck yet. Also in the comments, if you've made Cidipons and used different materials or have different ideas, if you want to share how you did yours. Now she's going to finish off the edge with the handle. You could do this last part some different ways, make some small little duct tape pieces, um, go through the handles, cut it out, but this is the way Annika wanted to do it. So Girl Scouts is girl-led, so I'm letting her lead by doing it how she thinks it should be done. And how she wanted to do it, make her own sit upon, again, making it unique. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> now we have to go outside and use them, huh? <laughs> yeah. Annika has a science project she has to do, so maybe I'll take one of these sit upons and watch her do her science project. For school, she has to count dandelions <laughs> and plot them, so... Um, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, hope you had fun. We had fun. Had some mistakes, but that's okay. You just learn from them. Um, hope to see you again at another one of our uh, Facebook Live events. We have knife safety coming up, which will be fun. And again, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>